All right, what's up everybody? In the background, I'm gonna go down there and show you how to apply channel on your greenhouse. And I wanna go over how high to put your channel. You can put it down here. You can put it all the way up here. You can probably put it even past the roll bar, um, past the uh, bend, but it's all up to you on how high you want your channel to go. Wherever you set your channel is where your clear poly will be able to roll up to. That being said, we decided to go five and a half feet up, make a mark, five and a half feet up on the other side, make a mark, and then run a string extremely tight going down the length of the greenhouse so that you can follow it and apply your channel super straight. Let's go down here and see how they do it. You're also gonna wanna cut these small sections of channel that I call Hot Wheels. And what I do is I put them on the back side of the channel to connect two pieces and I'll show you how that's done over here. What the guys have done, they've taken a Hot Wheel and they've screwed two screws right here. And then another Hot Wheel to just connect the piece of the channel so that they stay as one unit. All the way down, got one guy holding, one guy screwing and hot wheeling. Super, super easy. You can do this with one person and uh, painter's clips, but it helps when you have a second person. So after we do all of our side channel running down, you're gonna go to each end hoop. On the end hoops, you're gonna want this channel track to go on this hoop all the way up and over to the other side. That's what's gonna hold your end wall plastic and your clear plastic on. You're also going to be doing that from right here on this hoop down and up and over because we're gonna be putting a piece of blackout plastic right here on this two foot inserted hoop on this side and on that side. It's gonna look like that greenhouse behind Travis right there and uh, the reasoning for this is you want no light to leak in on these edges. So that extra two feet with that blackout plastic underneath the clear provides that for you. Boom, T3 greenhouse, 20 years truly the greenhouse guru. When I get to the next step, I will pull out my phone and break it down for you. I'm trying to make these short, simple, and straight to the point and uh, just keep it all about the greenhouse. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my verticals for my doorway going all the way up. I'll be slamming three inch tech screws from the top of the hoop into the wood or I will be using a Simpson tie. There's multiple ways to skin a cat. At the end of the day, you're still gonna have a dead skinned cat. I know I say that a lot. After we get our channel on our sides and our uprights for our fan and our uprights for our door and our light traps, we will hang our light traps, skin that wall, we will hang our fan, skin that end wall. All right, so what I've done here is, I've already completed this one. This is what it's gonna look like when it's done. You wanna get this one on a level, right? Make sure that this one's level. Screw it in down below. Get your top cut. Bolt your bolts either through the top or use an L bracket with a Simpson, called the Simpson tie. Either or, they both work. You could also measure from this pole to the bottom and from right there to the middle. What I like to do is my first door pull, I put straight up and down, I hit it with a level, make sure that it's level. Then what I do, I grab a tape measure, I measure from right here to right there where I already have my other one set temporarily but not marked, not cut. So from that point to that point was 73 inches. So now what I do is I go to the top. This one's already bolted in 100%. I get my tape measure out. I make sure it's pushed up against the inside of that door. I measure to right here. When it's at 73 inches, which would be right there, I make these marks. As you can see, two marks for my uprights. And then on the inside, I actually made a mark to cut. So now what I do is I go down, I pull that one screw out. I go and I cut this board, I put that screw back in, and then boom, it mimics exactly like that. If you level this board and level that board, your door is gonna be different. You want it to be perfect, whether it's four feet wide, seven feet wide, however long, you wanna plumb your first up and down, and then you wanna measure everything off of that one. You want everything to follow that one. This one will be level, 
if it's 73 from bottom to bottom and top to top. And this is just more builder etiquette than anything. This isn't, you know, to do with the greenhouse because all the end walls are different. Some of you have metal end walls, some of you have wood, poly, polycarbonate, you have roll up doors, you have every greenhouse is gonna be different, but in the same sense, they're all the same. So just like everybody else. Much love everybody, cheers. All right, so I've got my upright tran. Like I said, you level one and then you measure off of that one, which whatever you do on your front end wall. Don't sit here and level each one or they're gonna be like cattywampus. Um, I'm gonna be putting my header board in for my door, my bottom header board and top header board for my light traps. Light traps are 39 inches. I'm doing 39 and a half, so it gives me some variance because it has these rivets on the sides and uh, they cause problems because they're about a quarter of an inch each. So you give yourself about a half inch variance in that upright. Looking good, looking good. Jesse's working on doing the up and over channel and uh, boys are just killing it. All right, so good tip. Just put your bottom board in. Screw that one 100. Don't put your top one in because then it's kind of a pain to slide these light traps in. What you want to do is leave it just like that. Pick the light trap up, insert it, put four bolts in, self tappers, one, two, three, four. You can then fasten it later and then what you do is you have this spot that you can just slide your piece of wood in, screw it in each side, and then do it. And you don't have to fight it so hard. All right, another big tip. Use these painter clips right here. They're adjustable. And then you can uh, click it one click at a time to raise this side and to raise this side to get that perfect space in between your door. So you can scribe out where you want to put your hinges. And then it's uh, putting channel all around these light traps putting channel around the door frame, on the door itself, and on the baseboards, and on your uprights. And then we will uh, get back to when I have the plastic for the end wall, and I'll show you how to do it. Hello everybody, thank you for watching. All right, as you can see, I've got a little three foot wide by like 100 foot long blackout skirting. I have it elevated so that I can pull this up and over. Then I'm gonna tack it with small little tacks, get that done, get the other side done, and then we can cap our end walls and then proceed to pull clear. As you can see, it is extremely windy here. All right, so this is called wiggle wire. You're gonna have channel running the length of your greenhouse and up and overs on first two hoops on both sides. Baseboards, channel gonna be going around your fan. And uh, what the wiggle wire does is it holds your plastic inside your channel lock. Comes in bundles of 10 and one huge hunk of it um, is 100. Comes with 10, 10 packs. You're gonna get these out. I'm gonna make some clips, meaning that I will do two humps and a valley, and I will cut right here. So if you look at it from this way, I've got two humps and one valley, and I call these clips, and I'll cut up a couple pieces of wiggle wire so that I can temporarily tack this blackout up, temporarily tack my end wall up, then pull my clear over, pull the clips that are temporarily tacked, and proceed to put them on the clear holding this skirting, this end wall, and the clear all with one wiggle wire track. You can do multiple. Um, I don't suggest it unless you order a deep channel. So most of the time I just literally tack my end wall, tack my skirt, tack my clear, and then pull my tacks as I wiggle wire all the way up and over and down below. All right, so with this greenhouse being a 20 by 100, we got a 40 by 150, which allows us to cut our end wall plastic and our depth curtain at the same time. So what we're gonna do from bottom of baseboard to top is like 11 feet. So I'm gonna cut 12 feet off of this roll. Cut it off, go over there and tack it up. I'll make a time lapse of it and give you some tips and tricks. And then I'll come back down here, roll it again, cut another 12 foot section, and go do the front side. 
That's gonna leave me with plenty, plenty of blackout to do my depth curtain. And then I'll be able to cut pieces off of here as well to save and utilize for light leaks or skirts or whatever you wanna do as far as using your scrap plastic or throwing it away. I hope all these videos help, much love. And uh, we're gonna crush it and try to get our end walls and clear up tonight. This Trav is going home. He's got kids' birthdays tomorrow, so she. So we've wiggle wired up and over on the other side 100%. Now we're gonna pull all this slack out. You can see the tarp's lifting up and it's loose on this side. I'm gonna get up here with tacks and pull as tight as I can, tack it. Pull as tight as I can on that seam, tack it. And the same right there on every seam, pull until you get all that slack worked out to the back and then wiggle wire down and down. And then we'll show you the next step which will be putting your bars on top of the plastic and connecting your clear roll-up bars to this. Roll them up halfway and then wiggle wire your run. You can do it either way. You can put the plastic on like this and wiggle wire it too. I like to put my roll bars on there so it holds it nice and taut after I get both end caps wiggle wired. All right, as you can see, I've got the hand crank. All you do is drill a hole through the swage and then your hand crank has a shaft on it with a nut and a bolt, put it through, turn hand crank, it turns shaft. Super easy. Piece of EMT slides through the hand crank to act as a pivot point. We'll get to that in a little bit when I slam my poles in. It's basically a telescoping arm spot. Every other hoop, there's a 12 inch section of channel. 12 inch section of channel. 12 inch section. 12 inches long, screw them all on this bar going down the whole length, every other hoop. Then set your bar on top and then literally Use your baseboard, lift up this plastic. I'm gonna put my foot here and do this for you guys. With one hand. Boom. Now, wiggle wire in. One second. All right, wiggle wire in. Boom, level with the bottom of my baseboard. It's that easy, folks. Do that all the way down and then hand crank that bitch up, it rolls. All right, after you've done your end wall hoop up and over, and you've done this end wall hoop up and over, I like to roll my sides up so that I can kind of hold tension right here while I wiggle wire my whole track. So I got Aiden down there running the wiggle wire all the way down. And then we got Jesse over here running wiggle wire all the way down. Once we do that, we'll throw a rope, roll our blackout up. We'll put a channel up top on top of the clear plastic. Then we'll pull our blackout, wiggle wire it, and proceed to do exactly what we did with the clear with the black. So, much love. I'm gonna go up front and start wiggle wiring these doors, fans, and light traps, and uh, the back, and get everything cut open so that we can just proceed forward to the next step. It's the sound of my people. Get tarp. Gosh, it's clean. All right. Boom, six by eight door. Beautiful. Nicely hinged. I'm gonna go back and do crush mode. T3, 24 by 100, fully automated blackout system pull out 100, 150 pounds out of one of these things every three months. Keep your options open. It comes to saving money and making money. Get at your boy, the real greenhouse gear, or hit up T3 and get you one of these bad boys. Hit me in the DMs if you want me to build it. Yeah.
All right, so we got our 12 foot sections of double channel. Flip this over. So there's two rows of channel in one. What I've done is taken a 12 inch section and then flipped it upside down, put three or four tech screws in it, call it a hot wheel, put some tape underneath just in case no sharp serrated edges. And then I'll be putting tape right here as well. And that allows me to set the next piece of channel on there and screw them together really nice and tight. Super simple. Prep work makes it super easy. I'm gonna be setting these up. I'm about to climb up top and uh, run them all the way down. All right. Everything's just sitting up top, ready to go. Looking good. Make sure to bolt down every hoop. Every hoop. Mm. Just run it all the way down. If you got straight seams, you can follow a seam and uh, just have everything real symmetrical, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. All right, so we have got a motor. We've got a cup link that goes onto your telescoping arm bar. And then this bar goes inside this bar so that they telescope. Motor goes on coupling. And then over here, go ahead, Jesse. You have holes on the bottom of the bigger pipe for your pivot points. I already got mine bolted up. And then this one slides inside here. Super easy. And then from there, I have this little metal square tube slides over perfect over my motor with a bolt nut and then this tube slides inside your HD tube aluminum two tech screws right there really self-explanatory much love Boom. Always test your fans prior to putting your light traps on. Just because you wired it right doesn't mean the fan works. There's always manufacturer defects, shit like that. Ventilation. All right, how to set this up. You've got motor one, motor two. They're in manual mode. These switches will operate your depth up and down. Motor one should be the motor that's on that side. Motor two should be the motor on that side. Follow your cords that you brought in the back of your greenhouse to figure out which motor is which. I know that this one is my left motor, so I'm calling it motor one. What I do is I put it in manual mode, click it down. You can't fuck this up. You literally touch your wires to each post. If it starts rolling down, which it is, it's hooked up correct. If you switch them, it's just gonna roll up. So make sure it's in the right direction going down and that it's the left motor so that you don't get messed up. I'm gonna wire these up. 